Morning, everybody. Could we be at a greater place than Hancock Adams Common on a gorgeous September morning? Certainly want to welcome everybody this morning as we welcome our Lieutenant Governor this morning and a number of state officials as we celebrate uh, Climate Week. And I just want to make a couple of notes. And since we earned a green status back in 2011, the city has been the recipient from the state, the Commonwealth, more than a million dollars that has helped us to make our buildings far more efficient uh, and reduce our carbon imprint, footprint, I should say. Um, and I do want to express my gratitude to our public buildings department. I see Shelley Dean here, our manager, sustainability manager, Paul Hines, David Scott, the entire team from public buildings. Uh, they're so cooperative and helpful. I want to acknowledge uh, last two years, Lieutenant Governor, we created Department of Natural Resources, and uh, that's doing great work. I know the secretary was, took a tour with me not too long ago looking at some of the great, great spots we have here in the city. So uh, we think we're doing our part. And uh, I know we're going to be doing some additional things uh, going forward. But at this point, uh, I'd like to introduce our Lieutenant Governor. Um, I think just about everybody, well, not quite everybody, but almost everybody here was at the General's Park and Bridge dedication not too long ago. And uh, I got to express my continued gratitude to the Baker Polito administration for the continued partnership on everything Quincy. Uh, they're no strangers to Quincy. They're here on a regular basis, uh, whether it's dealing with MBTA issues, whether it's dealing with economic issues and helping us with our downtown, transportation-oriented development at the North Quincy T Station. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, they've been remarkable in their leadership in the state for so many issues. And this is one of these issues, I think, that is nonpartisan. Uh, you know, the Baker Polito administration was tremendous on the opiate issue, the addiction issue, that's nonpartisan. This climate issue is nonpartisan. So I want to bring to the podium a dear friend of our great city, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's always an honor to be here in the great city of Quincy. And you couldn't ask for a better place uh, for us to kick off uh, Climate Week here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, when you became mayor, you certainly didn't uh, take off your parks commissioner hat and obviously took the lessons you learned from your dad to heart in continuing to make uh, this city a livable uh, place to raise a family, to live, to move to or grow up in uh, as a generational uh, citizen of, of Quincy. And I just want to say on behalf of the governor and our entire team, uh, thank you. I remember coming here back in, I don't know, campaign days around 2014, and we took a walk around uh, the city and it looked very different then than it does now. Uh, you obviously invested a lot in housing but I remember how passionate uh, you were then to seeing this park in the downtown area uh, come to uh, fruition. And at that point, it was more of a, a vision and a planning exercise, but it takes real leadership to take your vision and your plan and make it a reality. And that's also true for the General's Bridge and the park there and other parks that you have around the city uh, congratulations to you and to your team for doing a phenomenal job for the people of Quincy. So although this is a perfect day, uh, there are days that are not like this around our country and, and certainly our Commonwealth. And you can see the effects that climate is having on weather and on our infrastructure. In a city like Quincy, we can point out a number of things. With 27 miles of coastline, you have infrastructure there that you are stewards of to maintain for generations to come. And you have older buildings that you have uh, treasured and newer structures as well. But the older uh, buildings certainly can use a, a plan and support around building more energy efficient uh, structures and adding features to older buildings that will make them energy efficient. And one thing that I know Secretary Theoridis and her team have focused on uh, is this map. 
I'm very proud to say as we kick off Climate Week today that we have 280 communities, including Quincy, that are designated green communities. Now you just don't call yourself green and call it a day. You earn the green designation by promising and making a commitment that over a five year period of time, you're going to reduce your energy uh, usage by 20%. And that takes a plan, obviously department heads and everyone figuring out how a city like Quincy can, can accomplish that. You'd think about your boilers, you think about your windows, you think about your vehicles and making them hybrid. You have electric uh, vehicle charging stations. All of those things take not only a plan, but take resources as well. So we're very proud that we're at 280. I know the secretary thinks about all 351, but we are quickly uh, getting uh, to the, the whole state becoming a green state. This uh, announcement today of $8 million to 59 communities, including Quincy, allows us to partner with you uh, so that we not only uh, set our goals at the state level, but we work with our municipalities directly in order for us to reach our goals by becoming net zero by 2050. We could not accomplish this goal without having these plans implemented at the municipal level. So we, we are so grateful and we are very pleased that you will be receiving the maximum amount of the grant of $200,000 to incorporate some of these uh, energy efficient features into your municipal infrastructure. So congratulations to you and thank you. And finally, I just wanna say, we have a one-time uh, opportunity here. The federal government is infusing dollars into the states. Uh, municipalities uh, have received federal ARPA funds as well as the state and the legislature. I don't know if any of my colleagues are here, but I know that they're reviewing the governor's plan around the usage of the $5.4 billion that the federal government has distributed to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Secretary Thea Harides and her team have outlined $900 million uh, for uh, energy and environmental uh, investments. We could use those dollars with some of the municipal dollars to do more of what we're doing today, build out infrastructure that's resilient for decades to come, but we want to put those dollars to use. So please uh, talk with your legislators and work with our administration so we can get those dollars literally uh, into the hands of good mayors and municipal leaders like you uh, to make Massachusetts uh, more energy efficient, of course, but also resilient to the impacts that climate uh, is having here in Massachusetts and across our country. So congratulations to all of you. And now I want to turn it over to Secretary Thea Harides. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor, and talk about someone who thinks about all 351 cities and towns and has actually been to all of them in the Commonwealth. Lieutenant Governor and the Governor and the entire administration are so committed to these local and state partnerships that bring resources into our communities, but are led first and foremost by the residents of those communities. And so a big thank you to Mayor Koch for hosting us this morning and for all of the work you do in partnership with the state. It is a tremendous privilege and an honor that we have as state officials to, to form these partnerships with our communities and really let them lead by example. And our Green Communities Program is just that kind of program. It's a partnership program where cities and towns work to upgrade their municipal infrastructure, to make it more energy efficient, to reduce their emissions and help us reach our net zero by 2050 climate goals and at the same time, save money and bring renewed life into their communities. So this is a terrific program. As the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, there are now 280 communities in it, nine new communities this year, which is tremendous, um, and about $7.8 million going out the door into our communities. So a terrific way to kick off our Climate Week. We are crisscrossing the state this week to talk about the challenges of climate change, but more importantly, to talk about the opportunities to build a more sustainable and a more resilient Commonwealth. And as we're doing it, to really breathe new life into all of our communities from the Berkshires right out to Cape Cod. We're talking about investments to reduce emissions, to deal with the root causes of climate change, but we're also talking about investments to deal with the impacts we're already seeing all across the state, whether it's coastal flooding and erosion or extreme heat um, and heavy rainfall. These are things that we can do now with money, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, 
from the federal recovery program. And one of the reasons that Governor Baker's plan on that program is so strong is because our communities have brought forward all of these priority investments through our Green Communities Program, through our MVP program, through dams and seawalls, um, and our coastal resiliency grants. We have a roadmap for what to do and how to bring your stronger commonwealth. And now we just need to put the resources together to move quickly on it and to move forward. So thank you all for all of the work you do every day um, in each of your communities to make them stronger and to help us deal with the impacts of climate change. And now I, I want to say a special thank you to our team at the Department of Energy Resources who runs our Green Communities Program. They are out um, across every region of the state working hand in hand with communities, testing new ideas and really bringing the latest um, on energy efficiency to bear in our communities. And, and it really is that hand in hand partnership. And so with that, I'll introduce our commissioner, Patrick Woodcock, um, to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Secretary. I was reflecting on this morning the scale of the challenge of climate change and how it really requires collaboration up and down different levels of government. Right now, our UN General Assembly is talking about this issue. Right now, in the halls of Congress, they're talking about this issue. And right here at this municipality, we're taking action on this issue. I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor as uh, articulated by the Secretary. She is really the head of the spear of our municipal relationship and reminds commissioners constantly how much effort that takes and what it is important about good government when you have collaboration at different levels of government. That's what the Green Communities Program is about. Taking analytical work from the state, implementing it at the local level. Quincy's been at the head of the curve since 2011 in the administration of the Green Communities Program. I couldn't be more pleased at looking at the competitive grant that they put forward to the DOER, that not only are they continuing the long efforts of reducing electrical usage, but they're beginning to look at transforming their buildings and their municipal vehicle fleet. That is completely consistent with our analysis in the Clean Energy and Climate Plan. And as we look to 2030 and implementation of the Climate Act, Quincy continues to lead through the Green Communities Program. I wanna take reflect also that when we think about Massachusetts and its leadership, it isn't just about meeting our goals. It's really creating a template for action across the country. I am incredibly proud when I'm talking to state officials across this country and they start asking me about the Green Communities Program. How does it work? How is it funded? And how do you work with municipalities? Climate leadership is not just about meeting our, our ambitious goals, but really creating a textbook of climate action that is cost effective for our economy, works for our residents, and creates a clean energy economy. That is what is occurring in Massachusetts, and that is what we're going to do nationally, internationally. I want to reflect that uh, the, the action that is required international, internationally, nationally, in our state can be overwhelming. But today, we reflect on action. Action that is meeting Quincy's goals, our state goals, and our national goals. So pleased to be a part of the administration of nearly $8 million being announced today. And I wanna thank the team at the Green Communities Program that really is at the front lines of that partnership. We have Joanne Bassetta, Neil Duffy, who is the regional coordinator, and this program would not work without their leadership. With that, I wanna say a quick thank you to them. And I think we can do a photograph with the uh, entire group here. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, with us today are a number of city councilors. I want to acknowledge them. Uh, city Council at Large, Noel DeBona. Ward 5 Councilor Chuck Phelan, who has a 
quite a bit of uh, waterfront in his community. David McCarthy, who's got two peninsulas, uh, an awful lot of waterfront in his community as well. And we've experienced some incredible storm issues over the last several years. And I'd like to bring up now the chairman of the Public Safety Committee of the City Council, uh, talk a little bit about the some of the money for this grant we're going to be doing. And I should also note, uh, you're no stranger to floods either, Council. I remember 2010 when we had 10 inches of rain in, in less than 24 hours, and we are taking people out of their homes in West Quincy and boats. So we certainly are well aware of the issues related to climate change, and I'm grateful to my city councilors, the partnership that we do have in dealing with it. Councilor Pemochi. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day. So much to be thankful for today in Quincy. Madam Lieutenant Governor, Madam Secretary, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Mayor, my colleagues in government, I see a number of department heads out there, city employees, and uh, especially the Green Communities team. Good morning, welcome to Quincy. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the Lieutenant Governor uh, for the work that the Baker Polito administration has done here in Quincy. Through this grant award today, they're continuing their long support of what we're doing here in the city in our community, as well as communities across the Commonwealth. And really this, this program, the Green Communities Program, uh, is, is a testament to the work that they do, where rather than dictating what municipalities should be doing, they say, we have this funding available, this is our goal, net zero emissions by 2050, how can we help you help us get to that goal? And it's not always like that in state government or federal government. Uh, where you have that collaboration. And I think that's really a testament to the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor, both having worked in local government as a state rep and a, and a selectman. Um, we're lucky to have them as such, such strong partners at the State House. And this program alone has distributed over $130 million to more than 100 communities across the Commonwealth. And the grant that we're receiving today, while it's not glitzy, uh, it's necessary. Right? We're updating and uh, retrofitting our school buildings. We're putting four um, uh, fuel efficient hybrid vehicles on to the road through our police department. And really it's just, um, it's a wonderful opportunity to work with our partners in the state and which I have to give kudos to the mayor. The Koch administration has really just done a terrific job of <laughs> always being ready with a project when there's a funding source available. And I think as I look out and I see some number of department heads and folks who work in the administration, you know better than I do, he always has an idea. He's just waiting for the money to come around. And so whether it's uh, building the, the new Kincaid Park, which was we did in cooperation with, uh, with the state, or uh, retrofitting our buildings, uh, the window programs, building new schools, uh, and, and this program here today, where we'll receive this money and put it to good work to help meet that, the uh, environmental goals of, of the Commonwealth. The, uh, the true testament of this partnership is what it produces. Right? And as I said, this, this isn't glitzy work, retrofitting a building, uh, retrofitting school buildings, or, or putting fuel efficient vehicles out on the road. And it's things that the, the general public probably wouldn't even notice, but they'll feel the impact in better fuel efficiency, lower energy costs. And quite frankly, this is the important work that we have to do for our residents today on climate change, and more importantly, for the residents of the future of Quincy and the Commonwealth. So I thank Lieutenant Governor, Mayor Koch, on behalf of the City Council. Uh, we welcome our continued partnership. And, and the easy part for the Council, we just get to say yes to this stuff. You guys do all the hard work. Um, but I hope uh, we can look forward to another six years of the, the uh, baker Polito koch partnership. It's been great for Quincy and I think the Commonwealth as well. Thank you. Was that a subtle endorsement, Councillor? Sure. <laughs> Lastly, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, the folks locally, the Climate Action Committee we have here in Quincy. I see David here. Uh, they work extremely hard. You know, when, you, when you're in government, there's, there's a million people pulling in different directions. There's people that like library services, it may be schools, it may be parks, but uh, we really rely on groups like you, David, to keep us, uh, our feet to the fire, if you will, on these issues. So we thank you for all your your good work on a volunteer basis. Uh, thank you to you and your team as well. So that concludes our, I believe, our event this morning. Again, thank the Lieutenant Governor. 
we send our greetings to the governor and uh, I hope to see a re-election announcement soon. Thank you, everybody. God bless.